impacts that might come with the special land use. I mean, there's, so there's a little bit of you know, the impacts. You, you look at them a little bit with a relative perspective because right. it's not just what's the impact because everything has an impact, but what is it relative to what everybody expects, which is just a single family residence. I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone is you know advocating for not letting anybody have anybody over or let anybody stay the night ever for any reason, no matter what. Right. So there's that, I think that has to be part of your thinking. Okay. Um, and as and, and commissioners, we're going to open this up to each other here shortly. But I, I, I have a question, I guess, and I'd like a clarification if I could. And this is going to have to come from probably from the entire group here. But Mr. Bars, as the applicant, I, I, I'm going to directly ask you, since we've had this Airbnb, what what is your take on the number of people you have rented to at, at one time, I guess, and the number of rentals? I mean, it, it, it appears from the testimony here that there's been multiple violations, if, if you would, of the new ordinance. Um, and I'm trying to establish in the last year what what kind of pattern has it been? So I'm going to ask you point blank, sure. and then I'll, I'll ask the neighbors if they have any difference of opinion. So we'll get, hopefully, we'll get at least uh, a sense of what's been going on. Sure. Do you want me to come up to the mic? If you would, please. Sure. Yeah. When I originally purchased the house, I, I don't know, two years ago, something like that. I had my realtor call and I called myself to make sure that Lowell didn't have any ordinances against it that I could rent it out, right? Because I've traveled for work for nine years now. Point being is I was told no, just like Andy mentioned earlier. So I started renting it out and then I got a letter in the mail saying that I couldn't anymore. So I stopped renting it out. My brother, whenever he comes back to town, he stays there. I had some friends from work that stayed there two weeks ago. It was actually a friend of somebody's at work. They're like, I don't even know them. But I didn't charge them money to stay there. They just stayed there. It's a free house. It's empty. I mean, I wasn't home. I wasn't using it. They're more than welcome to stay there. I can't rent it out. Point being is it's limited by the ordinance when I get my special use permit to 10 people. And that's how many will be there. I heard a question earlier about the number of cars in the driveway. I think somebody mentioned there was eight cars there the other day. I know some of the people that stayed there a couple weekends ago, they were in town for a bowling tournament or something. They, like I said, they're friends of a, a person that I work with. So but honestly, I don't know how many people were there because it's not operating as a short-term rental at that point. It's just people coming over. Okay. Um, so I, what you're saying is in the past year, you haven't rented it out? No, no. Um, one thing I would like to point out, though, is that we do have security cameras that do have audio, and we can look at whenever we want. Somebody mentioned, I don't remember exactly which of you mentioned it, but there was loud noises last weekend, and my brother actually watched the cameras half the night to make sure that nobody was being loud. He was just sitting at home and had them up. Uh, another thing I want to mention is they're not pointed at the pool and at the hot tub because it's an invasion of privacy for people. Like, if I were to rent somewhere, I wouldn't want to get washed while I was swimming in the pool. Like, that's just a bad practice. But they're, they're pointed at the entrances of the house. There's security cameras. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Sir, Take sir. Questions. Yeah. Ask the questions of the commission if you would. Okay. I, I, want, I want to know if he has other homes that he rents, or is this the only home that he rents? Um, save that question for well, later on. Right now, we're trying to determine: is there been, is there any difference to what he just said in the past year? Yes. yes. Well, yes. Please come on up and. Yes. He says that he doesn't rent it out that often. That is how I found out it was a rental property. When I met him and his wife, he told me that they were going to live there, but they had to go back to Minnesota, I believe it was. And then they were coming back to live here, is what he told me. And I, like I said, I walked down the driveway, I met Ellie, because I walked down my driveway a lot, and people come to see my dog. And um, 
I, that's how I found out about suburban property, people telling me that they were renting it and they rented it from home away. So I went on my computer and looked up home away, and sure it was, there it was. Mm -hmm. Right. Ma'am, was that within the last year? Is, is that was that was last spring. We go to Florida in the winter. Okay. That was. Um, okay, that's about. Okay, the, we always come home in May. That's about the time that the ordinance passed. I'm trying to determine if there's been at rental after we passed the ordinance. I'm sure there has been. It's been going on all summer long. Okay. You know, all summer and into the fall, and it's it's usually rented. And like I say, I have talked to several of the people who were renting it, okay. and that's you know how I found out it was a rental property. Okay. Well, okay. Anybody else, sir? I'm not sure exactly how many people have been there, but this weekend there were several cars there. Like I said, Sunday morning, it's right. quarter after six. I woke up in the morning. Someone's got a radio on in their car you can hear people talking outside. So I don't know if the, there was somebody else that he forgot to talk about, but there were several cars there. I you know, just I look outside my front, my bedroom is right uh, on the side of G Drive. So I can see all of this that's going on. So I don't know exactly, you know, if he is running it or not, but there are a lot of cars there. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes, yes sir. I think we're getting a little distracted with noise and activity. I used to live up in East Cape. Guys would throw parties up there all the time. I mean, you know, um, loud noises, yeah. That's part of living <laughs> living up there. Neighbor kids shot our cat with a BB gun. That kind of stuff happens. I understand that. My, my objection is not to loud noise or traffic or anything. My objection is this is commercial activity in a residential zone, period. Okay. Um, commissioners, let's go through the, the standards here. Um, so we're going back a page here, if you would, back to the special land use review standards. And uh, the first one is, is obviously that uh, the special land use shall be designed, constructed, operated, and maintained so as to be harmonious and appropriate in appearance with the existing or intended character of the general vicinity. Um, my, my take is, is that a, a residential house is, is, should not be a party house. And we've heard testimony here that, that it has been used for that. My, my question is, is we did put an ordinance in place to specifically limit that. So the, 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 the concern there is, is whether or not prior practice should be brought in as to what's going to happen, or whether or not we should look at this as um, a situation where there was a new ordinance put in specifically to outlaw those kinds of practices. What, what's the wording of the new ordinance? Is that what we're looking at here? Is this the new ordinance? Or what's the wording of the new ordinance? That... Yeah, yeah, with regard to the, just the way that it's conducted? Yeah, but yeah. The, when you say we put in a new ordinance to address the party house thing. It's... Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, I don't have the, the specific language in, in, in front of me, but it's something along the lines of shall be conducted in a manner that is consistent with the customary use of a single family dwelling. And, and the other thing is, is under the recommendations, if you look at the um, list of uh, conditions, you get into the applicant shall notify in writing the local area fire department, the local police department, the dates and numbers of the guests for each unique state. The site shall not accommodate more than 10 guests at a time. A minimum of five parking spaces shall be provided, and such spaces shall be located in a manner acceptable to the police and fire department. The applicant shall provide the city with a 24-hour telephone number with which the host or host agent can be reached in case of emergency and or enforcement matters. And the applicant shall provide an in-unit notice in a conspicuous place that includes the property address, a 24-hour telephone number with, with which the host or host agent can be reached. All applicable rules and ordinances related to the short-term rental and the maximum occupancy of the dwelling unit as permitted by the subsection. 
Um, and then it says the short-term rental shall be conducted in a manner that is consistent with the customary use of a single-family home. Well, the customer use of a single family home is certainly not partying and being noisy and all of those kinds of things on a consistent basis. Um, on a partial basis, it, it certainly well, would be. So, so I, in, in line with the idea of a customary use of a residential home, I look at this line one of the review standards, for, and uh, the thing that stands out to me is it says, you know, um, will not change the essential character of the area in which it is proposed. <clears throat> and that's what it seems like we're hearing from everybody here, is that it's changed the essential character of their area from neighborhood to someplace you don't feel at ease like you would in a neighborhood. So, <clears throat> and maybe, you know, the, the in terms of letter of the law, the, you know, the essential character is a, a little bit too, there's too much wiggle room in that. and. Um, uh, I think to his point, you know, the essential character being residential and not commercial is maybe a valid point because, you know, a 90-day rental to a single family would, with you know, low volume, low frequency turnover would be more in line with the character of a neighborhood. 20 people, you know, here and there for a weekend, for a weekend is not the essential character, in line with the essential character of a neighborhood. So, I don't know, maybe you hang your head on that that reeks of commercial behavior and not neighborhood behavior, and so then you're in violation of line one, and you know, that's it. I, I agree with what you're saying, the essential character, I think, by the sounds of the uh, public uh, comments, it uh, seems to be changing the essential character of that neighborhood. Anybody else on, on one particularly? And we can we can actually um, turn down the request based on just one of these um, standards, not being that. So we can we can hold a vote right now if you want to. Um, I guess my my point is though I would rather go through all six standards and see if there's any other reasons for our, our turning it down. And number two is this uh, proposed special land use shall be generally consistent with the uh, city of Lowell. I believe that that is. Um, I, don't, I don't see anything there. Does anybody else see anything there? Okay. Um, I also believe that the number three, the special land use, would be served adequately by the essential public facilities. So I don't see anything there. Um, but number four, that uh, shall not create excessive additional requirements at public cost or public facilities and services. I do see where if the police have to be called on a regular basis, um, which certainly would have been appropriate here had, had the police known who to call and things of that nature, uh, or if the uh, residents had known who to call at that point, um, where there would be an increase in police uh, activity out there at our cost. Um, so I, 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 I certainly can see something there. Anybody else have any thoughts on that? Well, I think to that point, if there isn't, if there hasn't been additional cost, you know, if there certainly will in the future, if you know this continues on, everybody's riled up. Right. Your neighbors are going to call it the drop of a hat now, and there's going to be costs if you know, particularly if there's more than ten people that are making noise. So. So if you haven't violated number four yet, I would guess that that would be the one everyone would target in order to put you in violation. <laughs> you know. Right. So. Well, and, and also the number five there, the uh, reason of the excessive production of traffic, noise, smoke, fumes. If you have an outdoor fire pit, you're going to have fumes. You're going to have smoke, which I believe is legal to begin with. Uh, well, having said that, you're definitely going to have more traffic. Than so, is there a motion um, to um, address the uh, John Barr short-term rental special land use uh, proposal here? Is there a motion from any of the commissioners? Before we do that, can we go back to one real quick? Sure. You stated that 
when you got back last year, uh, May, when you noticed the partying going on. And that was then, we passed the ordinance. And I guess I have a hard time, if, if, if you know for a certain fact that the party, that it's been rented out uh, illegally um, because of the noise and whatever, I'm just kind of curious why you, you never called uh, the police and, and uh, notified. Who are you addressing? Me. Um, did we ever call the police or not? No, I, I came up to City Hall once, though, and I talked to somebody, and they looked into it for me. Yeah, I talked to Sue Allard, and she said they had other complaints about it. Yeah, Where? I came up to City Hall after I found out it was a rental, and then she looked into something and said, well, it can't be a rental. He's, oh gosh, how's it going? He's claiming it as his residence, and she said he's getting all the mail. He gets all his mail there, too. All right. So I did talk to someone up here about that. But I, I'm, I'm just trying to, for my own personal, I'm trying to determine whether when he was told to stop, mm -hmm. did he stop? And we, um, when was he told to stop? Would have been about uh, this time yeah. last year, frankly. And no. I believe that's when the ordinance was no. passed. Well, it, didn't, this... it didn't stop until like late summer or fall, because we were going down. We can't, we see it every time we go down the driveway. Yeah. So we were going down our driveway one Sunday, and there was a great big van there. And I said, "Oh my gosh, we must be taking um." For but this is last year. Last fall. And before you your guys' information, the the ordinance that you all helped draft, that we all drafted, that allowed this as a special use was just approved like two months ago. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Yeah, this was ordinance eighteen oh something. So we worked on that in like November and December. And you approved it, I think, in January, and then council adopted it in February of this year. It be, it, and then it, it, it became ordinance. They went into effect in March. So this is very, very, so this new. Is very new. Now, when he was in, when the first complaint came in and Sue contacted him and told him that he had to take it down, I don't remember when that was. I, have to, I don't, I, I, just, I, I just don't remember when, when that date was. I don't know. I have to go through my email and see if I can find it. But it was sometime. Um, last year, because there was, we had a conversation that at the, the, the city council discussed this and gave the planning commission some some direction as far as how who should deal with it. Should the city council deal with it as a general law ordinance? Should planning commission deal with it as a zoning issue? Um, and so we spent a month talking about that. So it's, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it would have been about a year ago when they told him to to stop. Um, you know, I don't, again, I don't um, know if, now, the one that he did just a couple weeks ago, somebody stayed there, and it was basically a short-term rental, except that no money changed hands. But for all intents and purposes, outside of that, it, I mean, it sounds like pretty much was. There's some people that he knew, and some people that he didn't know, and they all stayed there. They didn't pay him for it. But otherwise, it was, it was essentially the same thing. Yeah, and so part of it, what it sounded like he, he was getting into, um, correct me if I'm putting words in your mouth, was it sounded like when you said, well, it wasn't a rental, and now that there's this ordinance in place and it's clear that, like, okay, there can be no more than 10 folks and all that, when I'm officially renting this property, I would be more responsible with respect to that. You know, I didn't know who was there because it's not a rental. I just let, you know, someone use the house. And it, so, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. I'm not the neighbor. It doesn't sound like there's a lot of trust between all the neighbors here. But uh, maybe you're, you know, instead of having a property sitting there empty and half used and just given up with no money, changing hands and no formal agreements and who knows what. And sorry, it's not a rental. There's nothing to regulate it under. Could could be even worse. Could be even and worse. Part of the reason why we instituted the Airbnb. Um, ordinance was to address these issues because these issues could come up not just in your neighborhood but anywhere in the world. So the object would be that by putting in the conditions in those ordinances 
that limits the number of people that can be there for very specific reasons. Uh, gives the uh, police and the fire uh, notice as to who's going to be there, who's running. They have to have an agent uh, that's within 60 minutes uh, of being at the house in case there is a uh, some kind of question. Uh, so a lot of those things were specifically put in to that law. And that's why I was questioning everybody about the timing. If, if if these incidences with the, uh, you know, the main hockey club or, you know, whatever, uh, are having 20 or 30 people there and, and, and noise and things of that nature, um, if, if, if there was no ordinance at the time, then, you know, he had, he had every right to do that. But if, if, if there is an ordinance in place, then we can enforce that ordinance and, uh, you know, make make the neighborhood feel secure and safe, and those are those are the that's one of the reasons why you do ordinances, frankly. So that that's part of the question here, and that's that's why I was questioning that at length because I I couldn't quite get the time frame here between when the ordinance and why he was here. If he hadn't been if he had been out of compliance with an ordinance that was already in place, that's one thing. But if if he was operating under the assumption that there was no order uh, under the fact that there was no ordinance at the time that's a different that's a different scenario so I think I think we have to keep that timing uh, to me that seems really, really important right. 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 yes um, if you go on their website, they have comments for rentals as uh, recent as April of 2018, where they did rentals for short-term rental during the process of a relocation from Chicago to Grand Rapids. So he has had rentals um, in April, and then there's even March, their church group, a rental for a church group. Here's February, great place for multifamilies, tons of space, game area, tons of amenities. That was in February, and then it goes back to August of 17, rental. Okay, again, August was way before so, there was an ordinance at all. So there's at least one, two, three, four, four in okay. April and February, where it does say on their website that they were rental. Mr. Farr, any, any answers? My brother takes care of all the renting and stuff. I think what happened there is we were allowed to relist the house <clears throat> and people rented it, but they stayed at my brother's house instead. And then because the listing was through whatever, they just didn't stay there and they went elsewhere. I'm not, I mean, I'm not sounds, trying to be a bad guy. Like, that sounds pretty bizarre. Sure. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to be a bad guy. I just please, John, please address the I'm sure. I'm not trying to be a bad guy. I'm, I'm not. Like, I'm just trying to rent out my house to try to get a little bit of money back after I shoved a whole bunch of money into making it nice. I mean, it has white carpet. I've never cleaned it. I, I'm just asking about the, the, the four sure. rentals that were mentioned. There. Yeah, and, and I don't know. We don't have any research on if it's, so it's, if it's a huge deal, I can call my brother. We can email you about it tomorrow. We can figure it out. But I, to my knowledge, I told him don't rent it out. So to my knowledge, it wasn't. Okay. Well, I don't know. I feel like I just keep going back around to that line on the one. I mean, the high volume, high frequency thing is what makes it smack and commercial stuff. He's purely doing it to get the money out of the property, so it changes the essential character of the neighborhood. If it was, if it didn't matter to you, the rate at which you got it back, and you just did it a driven and drab over a 10 year period, and you rented it out to a four person family over years of time, you don't want to be complaining, it would just be, but it's the, it's the high volume, high turnover that would make, it's making everybody uncomfortable. You know? So it seems to me it's, I have a question too. Yeah. Yeah. In theory, if this is approved and then stipulations aren't followed, what are the repercussions or then what steps are taken either by us or city council or whomever? Um, great question. I was getting 
I was literally just going to address that, and I knew that was something that's, that's passed. So yeah, this isn't, you know, because this is a special land use, this is a discretionary decision. Any conditions that you uh, put on the special land use become part of the permit itself, so any violations would be a violation of that. There is provision in the ordinance that allows the Planning Commission to suspend or revoke a special land use. Um, that process requires a uh, public hearing and giving the person an opportunity to correct the issues. Um, so, but ultimately, if you find that he has not, uh, you know, maintained or operated the special land use in a manner consistent with the application, you can revoke it, or you can suspend it for some period of time, or do whatever you want. Um, there are uh, likely also, you know, additional remedies outside of this. Part that the city might be able to to enact, like you know, citations and stuff. I don't know how that process would work here. I'm not involved in that. That's a attorney question um, and a uh, police department question. And um, but yeah, th this isn't something. And again, I'm not advocating either way. But this isn't something where if you approve it with conditions. You're just stuck, and it doesn't matter if he doesn't follow the conditions. I mean, obviously, if there's a violation, you'd have to document it and figure out what the violation was, and you know, put some facts behind it so you can be clear that there was a violation. Um, but assuming that there are and that they can be determined, then yeah, there is certainly a process to suspend or revoke or um, do whatever you need to do to get it corrected. Any other questions by the commissioners? I think he's doomed. <laughs> well, if, if, if we can have a motion one way or the other, then we can have a discussion on that and have a vote on Before you make a motion, uh, if, if your motion is to deny, just please clearly state what your basing your decision on. So if it's a motion to deny, specify which standard is not satisfied and for what reasons, just so it's clear for the record. Okay. Please, thank you. Did, when did the new ordinances come into play? Was it March? March, yeah. The effective date, I, I pulled up the, the draft on my phone and it was adopted on February 20th, uh, effective March 10, 2018, so two months. But he's notified a year ago. Ish. I don't remember exactly when we told him. And that was, like I said, you know, we knew about it, you know, that he was considering doing it, and we said, well, we don't have anything, so kind of, if you want to proceed, I guess, you're on your own. If there's, if something happens, then we're going to have to tell you to stop. You know, if we, if we get a complaint, we'll have to tell him to stop. Um, we did. So we told him to stop, and then that's when we started working on the ordinance to get addressed. So, um, all that being said, you know nothing um, requires you to approve it or disapprove it. So it's kind of up to you, depending on what your findings are, based on standards. And basically, if we approve it, the neighborhood would shoot it down. What do you mean? They would. Just, they wouldn't like your decision. Like it was one. Yeah, but I mean just. Because the neighbors don't want something is, isn't in and of yeah, itself but necessarily just, reason to keep it all. Yeah, as I say, eventually you just force them, yeah, the 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 force them to go. But yeah, but I mean, at, at the same time, I, and again, I'm, I'm kind of guessing here, but if, if people just call the police based on just nothing, yeah. then the police are going to get tired of that real fast. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to go out there and deal with it. I mean, if someone's going to call a violation on somebody, I mean, there has to be something to it. You just can't continually call any enforcement agency just to, be, just to test for somebody. I mean, that's not really <laughs> the way it works, right? But, I mean, yeah, clearly the neighbors in this case don't like it. That doesn't mean you have to disapprove it. I mean, it doesn't mean you have to... It's, it's, it's the, the, the public comment is intended to inform your discussion, not make the decision for you. So, take that report. Chair Barker, may I yes. address you? I just I think it's wise to let all of you know too that with doing some research over the last couple of days too, I have come across a couple other 
uh, homes in the city of Lowell that they are operating as Airbnbs as well. So I will be contacting them, and you'll have more special land uses coming before you with this. And, and that's that's one of my concerns, I guess. Is that, well, yeah, and, and we did write a special uh, Airbnb ordinance. I mean, we, we specifically wrote it with the situation in mind. Okay. Um, and it has not been tested, so to speak, it has not been operational, so to speak. Um, and the first case uh, was filed for, obviously, in March, shortly after it, it became an ordinance. Okay. Um, and to simply say that in the past it's been bad, is true, but that, that it should not. This the future should be better. It, it should it should change, and and as Andy says, we we certainly have that right to close down an operation if it's not being compliant with our laws. Yeah, I just think if you're if you keep at the high volume, high frequency, people won't be won't be happy and that's like right. uh the character of the oh we put a minimum of three days or something yeah. wasn't on yes or something. yeah minimum yeah. of three maximum of 30. Yeah. and so we, we picked 30 for the high end because uh the michigan building code i believe anything the occupancy longer than 30 days is just considered a permanent you know ongoing residential occupation so if someone stayed stay there for 60 days we just call it a single family dwelling and right and it certainly maintains that Option. Yes. I just think this is the reason that we uh, took the time and the effort and council sent it back and had it tweaked even more and we refined it better. Um, you know, I, I believe that the ordinance needs to be, you know, used. It's something that we worked on. We all sat here, not our newest one, but, um, and like you said, the warden passed it and he applied for the permit, correct? And, yeah, and we, so, to be honest, we knew that was going to happen. I mean, Mr. Barr was, you know, aware of what we were doing. He knew that we were writing an ordinance, and that's fine. He certainly within his rights to apply the second that it's approved by council. Okay. If he's so inclined, that's, and that's what he did, so that's that's fine. So I have to believe that what was going on in the past is probably a thing of the past because of the way we wrote the ordinances. There are certain things that uh, he now has to apply by, and if he doesn't, uh, we can pull it and it's done. He can't never come back and ask for it again. Who looks at it? Who looks at everything to make sure he's doing what he's supposed to? Is well, anybody? well, again, it, he has to. Uh, the fire department, the city, um, uh, everybody police, has to be notified. They, they have to be notified. That's one thing, so that they have the opportunity to go out there if they want to. They can go out there. Um, so that's that's part of it. Um, and you're right. I mean, I you know, do we need to? do anything else I, we don't know because we've never done it so that's so that's in our right. ordinance we tried to address the frequency issue but the, the right. volume issue is only addressed by the capacity of the building right? yes and so yes so two, two persons per bedroom if, so there's a capacity of yeah. 10 in this particular so case be 10 right so that's correct the okay. roller derby yeah. team yeah. staying there yeah. well and I, th I think the other thing that might be prudent is if if we do recommend it one of the uh, conditions would be the number of cars um, obviously, you could have 10 people there, you could have 10 cars. I mean, I, I, I guess I would recommend that we, you know, make that a condition of maybe seven cars or whatever. I mean, I can understand where there may be more than one car, you know, per bedroom. So, uh, we, I, I, I think that we can put that in as a uh, condition, though. And that would be another condition. Another condition that I would, I would highly question is the fire pit. I, I don't think that's legal. Well, it depends on if it's covered or not. Right, right. So, you know, fire pit has to be covered. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's that's according to the fire department, I would think. So, I mean, we can we can put those kinds of conditions on there. Though. Any other 
does somebody want to um, make a proposal? I have a question for yeah. Mr. Barr. T two questions, actually. Um, one being, uh, after the ordinances were passed, were you fully aware of the limitations, the 10 people? The, uh, were, were you fully aware of the guidelines that we put forth? That's the first question. And secondly, did you change your advertising for the building or the unit to the accordance of what we set forth? Because it doesn't sound like uh, from, I never have looked at your website, but it sounds like it was not deterring, you know, more than 10. More than, I mean, it sounds like it, it was advertised as a party house, which kind of nails you in the foot because you're advertising it still, even though we set all these rules. Tony, one of the things that we can do is put that as a condition, too. I mean, uh, you know, to update his website to uh, reflect the new ordinance. So the question is, why haven't you changed the advertising? To my knowledge, the website should say 10 people. Yeah, I think it's outside I did look. Right. I, I, I have a, a, a related question. It, obviously, you and your brother both do this. Who's the responsible one? I mean, I, in my, my experience, if you have two people both, both running it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I get one answer from you, but you know, if I go to your brother, maybe I'll get a better answer. <laughs> I, you know, the answer that I want to hear. Sure. I, I, that's I my concern is is that there there seems to be some disconnect there. Sure. There'll be two numbers on file with the the city or whatever the way the ordinance reads. The the manager local local agent isn't that what it was called? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes, the local okay. and agent will be one person. Then my brother's number will also be on file. He's uh, a lot more able to answer the phone whenever versus me when I'm out of the country. I don't have a phone that works for days sometimes. Okay. Okay. But you're the actual owner of the yeah. property? Okay. Yeah, anybody want to make a proposal? Or I will. I yes, ma'am. I'd like to know how many of these nine properties he owns. I don't think that has that, much to do with well, us. No, that's not because our, he owns several. Well, is this a business he's running? That's not our concern. Uh, at, at this at this particular meeting, that's not our concern. I mean, that's that's not our purview at this point in time. I understand the question, but it's just not our concern. I would move that we accept. Um, the um, short-term rental uh, special land use uh, for uh, John Barr at the uh, 2179 G Drive address with um, all of the uh, conditions, uh, the 13 conditions that are on the page with the additional conditions of updating the website um, And also the uh, question on the uh, uh, fire pit and, and noise levels. Now updating the website will take uh, the pictures of other people's property off of there. Right? Yes, yes. And also the, you know, the, the, the comments of, you know, it was a great, great house for 20 people to, to come and party. Um, up, update, I, let, let me rephrase that then. Updating the property to reflect the local city ordinance requirements. Still have the right to sell the house, obviously, but we need to have that uh, that outlined. And the other the other recommendation that I would have is that we also put a condition in there that uh, no more than seven cars on I, property. I would just assume we stay with the five. You want to stay with five? Yeah, we had we had a lot of discussion on that. And then okay, let's stay with five then. Yeah, stay with five. So five is the maximum? Yes. yes. Okay, so that, one per bedroom. Yeah, well that in in the ordinance that's that's the minimum. 
So, I mean, if, if you want to allow more, you can, but you don't, again, if you want to keep it at five, that's fine too. I just want to make sure that, that it's clear. So we'll need to update condition five. And just say that five parking spaces shall be provided, or no more than five cars on site. Right. Because if you look at the drawing there, there are two spaces off of the driveway, and then there's the driveway. Um, and anything beyond the five, you're going to be at the upper end of it. So okay. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I have another question, and I don't even know if it's within our realm to say, once this is approved, can we come back and review at some point, or does that review have to be spawned by complaints? No, you can if you want. If you want uh, the applicant to return to the planning commission in a year, let's say, that's absolutely fine. Um, realizing that special land uses run with the property, so it, it it doesn't mean that you know at a year that doesn't mean that you know, you have to grant an extension or that it's going to expire in a year. But yes, if you want them to come back in a year to address. Uh, questions. I mean, we can Sue and I can uh, you know make a list of any complaints we've received, and if the and if the, the police if the police department has heard working off the property, you know, however many times, we can certainly you know make you guys aware of that. If you determine that there have been violations, you can certainly take whatever uh, action you deem appropriate. If there haven't been any, and uh, in many cases, not with short-term rental necessarily, but uh, we do these a lot for, you know, sand mines and all kinds of stuff in other communities. And uh, they they come in, they report on, 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 on what they've done, if there's complaints, if there's issues to be take, taken care of, you can impose a, additional conditions or requirements at that time. And um, and then, you know, move on. You may have, I, think that's, there. So I yeah. think that's a great idea, especially since this is the first one with this, this ordinance. I mean, I, I think it gives us um, a pattern actually for all of them. Uh, as Sue mentioned, she's got two or three others that, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're looking for the best solution for uh, the city and, mm -hmm. and, our, and our citizens, frankly. So is the consensus then that the reviews would be done annually? So you would return at the May yes. 2019 yes. planning commission meetings? Everybody good with that? Yeah. You were your representative. Right. Prefer you. I can try. <laughs> uh, do I hear a second on that motion? I'll make a second. And discussion. Okay. Hearing no discussion, can we have a uh, roll call soon? Voice vote. And and please, I'll start with Kelly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you read. Summarize that motion. Do you want me to read the conditions? Yeah, there's a lot of them. Well, there's, there's 13 of them here. That's okay. Oh, yeah. If you've got those. So uh, the condition is to accept the site plan, uh, the John Barr short term rental special land use. Okay. With the conditions as recommended here, uh, the 13 conditions recommended, plus the additional uh, updating the website. Um, Max, max five cars on site and annual reviews by the planning commission. Correct. I guess I have one other question um, with that. So say the summer things get out of hand and there are numerous complaints, would there be anything that would... That would trigger... Trigger something sooner than... Yes, yeah, that, that, yes. That, that could trigger... Okay. Yeah, I guess that's my concern. Right. My point of view is that really at this point it's a... Right. It's a proof of burden issue as far as exactly. was there compliance before, what will happen right. going forward, but I, I want something in place so that those okay. concerned well, that's, that's why something I, in the event. That's why we have those conditions, yes, and that's why but we But I just want them to wait a year if no. something were to happen no. over the summer. No. no, absolutely not. I agree. I, I also want to give Mr. Barr a chance to change and curb the uh, property. Correct. As well. Correct. Any any other questions on the motion and the second? No discussion. And Sue, would you give us a voice vote, please? Yes. Commissioner Brandmeier. Aye. Yes. Yes. 
Commissioner Cabalder? Yes. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. Commissioner Ellis? Yes. Commissioner Plank? Yes. Commissioner Schraben? Yes. Chair Barker? Yes. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Barr, you have your uh, your special use uh, permit at this point, and obviously there's uh, a number of conditions uh, you're, you're going to want to get with the city uh, representatives and, and follow through on all of those uh, before um, you go past go. And I'd recommend changing that website post haste. However many websites you got it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Probably. Okay, uh, old business, chapter 19. Off street uh, parking and loading. Yes, um, so to summarize for, I know it's been a little while since we've discussed this, um, in the I think March meeting was the last time that you reviewed this stuff um, and Nathan was here. We did not have much in the way of changes. I think the parking section was was pretty good and I up, I made some very minor adjustments here to this draft. It's not dated 5 9 18. Um, and so I don't know, Mr. Chairman, do you want me to walk through all of these or since I through we, a couple we, times? We've so gone through this several times. Uh, yeah. Commissioners, do you have any um, any concerns with the uh, chapter uh, 19 off street parking and loading since the changes have been made? No, I went through it and uh, I, I, mean, we, I found absolutely no. Yeah, we've looked at this several times. Yeah, this one was, was pretty well, you know, done at the last time here, yeah. you know, in March when you guys last looked at it. So I don't, I didn't propose any big change. I mean, I updated the graphic on page two. I might update the table lastly on page. Oh, I know. I'm not sure, but otherwise, I'm sorry. I do have one question. Yeah. On page seven, uh, under offices, you've got banks drive-in uh, crossed off, and then you've got uh, the other side drive-in windows plus requirements crossed off. But the four is not crossed off. Should that be crossed off? Uh, yes. Yeah, that that is very possible. Yeah, the line striking it out might go right through the four, yeah. so they will yeah. out any hands. Yeah. need a wider line. Oh, yeah. I see. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I got gotcha. okay. uh, you. Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that that's, that that's the okay. case. Thank you. Other than that, uh, so at this point, uh, do I have a motion to accept? Before we do that, we need to have, we would need to schedule a public hearing on this chapter. Oh, we haven't done that. We have not done that yet. So parking and signs, I, I would think that we can do both of these concurrently so we're not noticing separate hearing and all that. So um, yeah, once you hold the hearing, of course, then you're free to recommend to council. Okay, let's let's just do a quick question here though. Um, commissioners, is there any questions on chapter 19? Well, we're gonna consider it closed until we schedule a public hearing. Okay, sorry about that. So on to chapter 20, which is the signs portion of it. And this is the first time we're looking at this, correct? Uh, I think you saw again a, a, a draft a couple months ago. I have been I, I went through this again okay. um, and again just to kind of summarize for for everyone. This is not an old chapter. I mean, we.